Good morning everyone. It's a Saturday morning and a perfect time for me to make yet another follow-up about the progress of uh, development of Minimic. So finally I have the first board assembled. This is uh, Minimic 1.98 uh, ATX running and um, Perhaps I should say a few things about the changes and modifications I made. So first, uh, if you remember, uh, header uh, wasn't really working for LED before until you um, remove these LEDs and replace them with uh, uh, just zero ohm resistors, but uh, that's corrected now. So LEDs work, will work just fine with the header as well. So if I press the button, it works just fine. And this is hard drive LED. So if I restart it, will, you can see it works just fine. Um, I connected the LEDs to uh, directly to NPN transistor. So uh, it, it works totally fine. Uh, so that's one improvement. Secondly, I've replaced those um, uh, bulky capacitors with uh, tantalum uh, caps. So everything is now, um, it's, uh, what, what should I say? I guess I should say it's easier to assemble and there's no really a difference in terms of uh, voltage regulation or any, any sort of performance. So that's, uh, that's a second improvement. Then this is the, this is the big deal here. Um, there are three jumpers. One is now for Wi-Fi. The other one is for ARM uh, serial. And finally, there is a Amiga, Amiga serial redirection because um, FPGA only has two lines available uh, for, for this sort of uh, serial communication. You can pretty much choose. So for example, now you see that it's LED is red and the Wi-Fi is ready. And if I... I'm sorry, I'm going to try to do this while I'm filming. If I switch to, let's say, ARM, so that's the second one, and I re-engage the board, you'll see the ARM LED is uh, uh, on. So that means that serial port is actually coming from the ARM as a debug serial port. And finally, if I want to use the Amiga serial port, I would just go and uh, choose the third jumper and then you can see that um, Minimix serial is active so that's how it works so uh, now I'm going to switch to the back to the Wi-Fi and boot the board you can see again that the LED is uh, on for Wi-Fi and this is the biggest uh, improvement for one uh, 98 I basically what I did I ported um, the the Wi-Fi uh, ESP32 module from Amicube to Minimic and now it kind of looks similar I mean it's in similar place um, I managed to do a minor mistake by flipping uh, on this header flipping T TX and RX lines but um, I was able to go around that uh, by changing um, variable code uh, and uh, recompiling the core, so it's it's using the proper proper lines for this particular header for this particular ESP32. If you're using different ESP32 board and they're all kind of different, uh, then really doesn't matter. Uh, so this core, new core, will um, it's designed. For to, to make sure that pinout is correct, so so this actually works if you if you connect the, the this little board directly to the to the motherboard. Now, having said that, that most of the time that won't really matter because uh, you'll use something like this to uh, remove the the board from the uh, this this ESP32 from the motherboard and kind of route this outside of the box outside of the case because if your case is uh, aluminium or metal. Uh, Wi-Fi won't work very well because of uh, Faraday's cage. So um, I, d I don't think really that this little um, 
mistake matters because obviously I can go around with uh, just changing FPGA uh, parallel code or um, or just using the, these wires and, and wire thing correctly uh, because as I said uh, unless you have specific case that's not really preventing uh, EMA energy to, to go out then you'll anyhow need to route this out of the out of the board uh, and use some sort of extension cables um, anyhow let me show you how it works I'm, I'm using this new core that I've uh, that I set correct uh, pin out uh, pins for the RX and TX for this header and uh, I have something here called uh, Genesis again sorry for my screen and artifacts it's it's just my phone doing this and uh, I have the demo version so bear with me for a moment connect and uh, yeah seems like we are on I will try to run perhaps ping okay let's try try mini week let's see I add there you go so for the first time officially, Minimi has uh, Wi-Fi connectivity and works beautifully. It's uh, it's great uh, set up a little solution for using BBS or you know FTP to download files. So to summarize, what was improved? Uh, bug with the LEDs uh, is now resolved. Now LEDs are operational on the header even without uh, removing these LEDs um, in case you want to use the, the case. Then there are jumpers here for uh, two pin jumpers for serial port, uh, for ARM, a mini mic and for the Wi-Fi. I'm using these uh, two pin jumpers for the simple reason that it's kind of easier to mount external switch on using these so uh, I assume many people most of the people will use this board with a case so that's why uh, so that that's a second kind of change or improvement and then finally here's the Wi-Fi blinking and doing its Wi-Fi thingy um, what I need to do is um, I need to upload these course and documentation on the minimig.ca and um, this it's setting up Wi-Fi it's not difficult but it's not uh, just plug and play uh, you need to use uh, these programming tools uh, for ESP to kind of set up uh, router software uh, to flash the router software on this thing and then you enter your SSD and the password using also uh, kind of serial terminal from your computer it sounds scary and complicated but once you do it uh, and you once you follow the instructions it's just like it's that simple it's not you know but for some people might be a little bit um, how can I say it looks scary because you know a little bit of um, terminal work is involved but it, it re it's really not um, hopefully I'll, I'll do proper documentation and I'll I'll include some links on the internet for uh, well, from other people how they did it so you can reference that as well but good thing is once you set it up uh, there's nothing in the operating system you need to do you just plug this in and uh, you power on your board and connect your you're in let the BBS thing start st starts so that's that's about it um, Right now, I'm going to assemble ten boards. Uh, they're all purple. I think I will start. I will continue. I'm kind of. I'm going to try to stuck with the, with the purple boards. Um, maybe I'll introduce more colors later. But seems to me that most of the people they ask for purple because it's so. It is kind of cool. Uh, I like it because also will match the the kickstart the background color when you boot up Amiga and you see that floppy disk. Uh, moving it's kind of the same color so so I think it's a good match um, if, if there is a need uh, I'll probably introduce a few more colors but uh, I don't think I'll go uh, full spectrum I'll just go with the black 
white and purple for now in short term uh, but first 10 boards again they're all going to be purple and the same thing is going on with the army cube i'm in the process now of uh, building 10 of these boards they're all green uh, the reason why they are green is because kind of green boards um, in many ways have the best performance uh, and I wanted to start with the green boards uh, for a few reasons but um, next patch will be purple as well so um, you know if, if you are really um, into colors of the PCBs and this means something to you you can wait a little bit but I think that um, doesn't really matter most of the time your board will be just inside of the case so it's exactly the same thing uh, this performance difference is uh, mostly for the prototyping and uh, for a tiny pitch uh, and um, uh, the, the this uh, solder mask it actually works the best but uh, maybe that's not really true nowadays because of technology I guess but before it was like that so that's um, that's my update for 1.98 I, I would say it's a success uh, I've tested the board uh, at uh, 58 megahertz running this um, 68,000 sec CPU uh, I advise uh, people to use minimum at this frequency and then if there is instability you can try to go slightly down to maybe 52 or 48 megahertz um, it really depends on the, um, most of the time it depends on the FPGA. Certain FPGAs will work with uh, these CPUs at 60 MHz, no problem, some will not. Uh, but um, there's not a lot of difference. If you run this at 48 MHz or, or 60, the performance are quite comparable. It's pretty much the same. So, um, and, and of course, some of the, these uh, Minimix will work at 60 MHz happily ever after but um, again I, I don't try to push too much because if you think about this CPU it's designed to run at um, this one I believe is 20 megahertz so we are overclocking this uh, violently to <laughs> to like 60 megahertz so it's uh, I think it's fine 50 58 or uh, 50, I think it's 56 sorry or uh, or 52 will work just fine so yeah, there you go. That's that's the update, and uh, with uh, happy pings, I guess so, um, I can wrap up this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. Ciao.